how uh, the belief in separation makes up a perceptual world of levels and degrees, and time itself seems to be in increments. And the solution to time seems to be playing out in an in incremental way. The Course talks a lot about time collapse, like the miracle collapses a thousand years as you judge it and so forth. Even though in reality, you know, if something like linear time isn't real, how do you collapse something that's not real? You know, if you start to follow this. But experientially, we have to, the Spirit has to relate with us with what we believe. If you believe you're a human being, you have musical skills, da 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 da, the real question is, what is the purpose of my life? And lately I've been trying to make it simplified for everyone. Uh, we were talking recently at our community meeting, we had, uh, the separation is a belief in scarcity, it's a belief in lack, and it's a belief in need. So as long as you believe in the ego, you will have needs. You will believe in needs. And when you believe in needs, you will seem to have to fulfill those needs. You know, why do people go to work? Why do people eat? Why do people do a lot of the things they do on planet Earth? It's, it's, supposed, it's based out of need. There's a scarcity principle that literally projected this linear world. You know, even though we've heard all is God, all is love, the Course teaches us that the world was made as an attack on God, a place where God could enter not. The Course teaches us that, that linear time has absolutely no reality in existence, even though the words of the Course are written for a mind that believes in time. 365 lessons. You know, well, that's pretty practical. You better, you must believe in time if you've got to have 365 lessons. If you, all the talk of process, of opening up, all of the book is written as if the separation occurred. Isn't that loving, that love is so practical, this Holy Spirit will put it into metaphors, like it'll give us a ladder of metaphors, as if they have some kind of meaning, and to human beings, oh they do have meaning. And basically I always thought of it as Jesus lowering a ladder down into time and space and saying, just grab hold somewhere, any rung will do, you can get a low one, a high one, leap up there, just leap on the ladder and we'll work, you know, we'll work it. So, if, what I say is, when you're coming from a place of lack, you know, it's the motivation, it's not the action, it's not what seems to be done, but it's what is it for, what's the purpose underneath that. You have a purpose now to shine and share and extend, to let the Spirit pour through you in music. Who made up the music skills? The ego did. I, I know this is a music festival, but I have to tell you, God, God didn't invent music. Music is an ego invention. I don't want to throw a damper on the whole thing. Like, yeah, music, oh we can. Yeah. No, actually, that's part of a self-concept. Uh, you know, when we talk about the melody of heaven, we're talking about pure oneness, and it's, it's pure stillness. It's actually beyond the notes, you know, even Mozart would say the glory, this glorious thing about the music was the gaps of silence between the notes. When you get that from Mozart, that's a, that's a signpost to go deeper in. So really, that's why we call it a music festival and an enlightenment retreat, because enlightenment is an emptying out of all self-concepts. And the way that we do that is we, we give the self-concepts, we give the skills and abilities that the ego made, we give them over to the Holy Spirit, we say, now you use it to inspire, to bless, to bring joy, to bring happiness, to extend the love and light of, of our Creator. Be you in charge. I would but follow. And what happens is, the more, you don't go from needs to no needs. I know a lot of us would love to make that jump, right? Needs to no needs. Human to eternal being bliss <laughs> back in heaven. You don't make the jump from needs back into pure beingness. You go from needs to letting the Holy Spirit meet your perceived needs to pure beingness. There's a surrender there when we start to say to Holy Spirit, you know the way, 
you take everything that the ego made and let it all be used for your purposes. It's really getting back into the undefined Lila was talking about, where instead of the I know mind, okay, I've got to do this, 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 I've got this process, I have to do A, B, C, D, E, F. It's more of a surrender over to the Holy Spirit and saying, be you in charge. And even your perceived needs will get handled because you still believe in them and because it's still practical for those to get handled. But in the end, the more you give your life over and you get into your joy and your happiness and your bliss, that the Spirit will use everything in such a miraculous way that it will suddenly dawn on you at one point that you have no needs. It'll just be like, whoa. It won't even be like they're gone. It'll just be so joyful that it will be a state of perfect fulfillment, perfect contentment. Everything completely provided. And so you go from being a needer and a consumer into being a joyful extender. Imagine using your whole seeming story, your whole life on earth to be an extender of joy. Wouldn't that be fun? And then, as you get more into the extending, and you get happier and happier and happier, and all your perceived needs are being met, 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 without this grinding, efforting, struggling, just easily provided, 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 that's what the miracle does. Eventually you are lifted to a state where the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you follow desire to its core, to its true essence, you'll find it's a state of beingness. It doesn't have any lack in it. You don't go back to heaven and say, God, I desire a Snickers bar. You know, it's not heaven. There's not, there actually is, is what Nisargadatta called desirelessness. That's what heaven is, it's desirelessness. Because it's pure beingness. Being, beingness doesn't desire. Desire, you know, the Course says, truth will be returned to your awareness by your desire, as it was lost by your desire for something else. To desire something other than God, something other than truth, is part of the separation. That's part of the needs, you know. Most people think of desires as synonymous, but there will come a point out of pure devotion, out of let thine eye be single, out of I give it over to you, I give it over to you, I give this song over to you, I give this concert over to you. When you totally surrender to the Holy Spirit and you say, of myself I can do nothing, but of you I can experience everything, that actually is a, is a, is a transformation of, of awareness into a return to a state of beingness. And, and all we're doing is witnessing, I'm just witnessing by seemingly the parable of David and the life of David is just that, that that's exactly what happens. It's not, it's not, we don't need rocket science for this, it's just, it's destiny. <laughs>